Hello, my name is Erica Joy Baker. Um, I am a senior engineer at Slack Technologies, Inc. I am the co-founder of Project Include. I'm a member of the Girl Develop It Board of Directors. I'm a member of the Atypica Advisory Board. And I'm a member of Barbie's Global Advisory Council. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> but more importantly right now, I'm very scared. Um, I have to tell you that I was planning on giving a completely different talk when I came here. Um, about a month ago, you know, I had my slides all ready, I was ready to go, I was gonna talk about diversity and inclusion, because that's my thing. Um, but on November 8th, there is an election in the United States, and despite all polling and discussion, to the contrary, a fascist won the election, a demagogue won the presidential election. A hero to bigots everywhere who is right now appointing white supremacists after white nationalists after white supremacists to his cabinet won the election. And so I cannot in good conscience stand up here and give you my well-rehearsed, very polished lines about diversity and inclusion in the tech industry because while I have the stage, I have to use it to talk about something way more important saving the world. What we're seeing right now in America, in Europe, all over the world, is the rise of neo-Nazi groups and white supremacy. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a black person. Um, and white supremacists are not really my biggest fan. Um, what's happening has me worried about where I can go on this planet to be safe. And I'm not one to sit idly by and let things happen to me and the people I love and the people I care about. So I figured I need to protect the places that I hold dear. And the internet is one such place. The internet is the place I call home. It is where I spend most of my time. It is my country of residence. Now let me explain that a little bit. I don't really talk about this part of myself online that much. Um, it's not on my website. It's not in the bio that y'all saw uh, on the programs here. Um, it's, it's you know things that I don't think are relevant, but right now it's important. Um, I've been online for nearly two decades. Um, in 1995, I had my first online experience on the web as we know it today. Um, prior to that, I played around on Gopher. I don't know if any of y'all remember Gopher, but that was what I used before the dawn of the internet, or the web as we, use, you, we know it today. Um, so I was in my high school library, and two of uh, my friends and I were sitting around the computer, the one computer in our library, poking around on the internet, exploring as kids are wont to do. And we got online using this thing called Netscape Navigator. <laughs> that might give you an idea of how old I am. <laughs> and we go to this website called Blues Traveler Chat. And it's something like that. I don't know if that was the exact name, but I remember the Blues Traveler part. Now, mind you, I was no big fan of Blues Traveler. Um, they're a fine band, but you know, I wasn't a huge fan. Um, but somehow, in our exploring, we wound up there. And in Blue's Traveler Chat, there were a bunch of people, but nobody knew who we were. Nobody knew that I was a 14-year-old black girl in Alaska playing around on the internet for the first time. The only thing that I knew about who those people were were the names they chose to give themselves. Fear, Zardox, Tannis, very interesting names. And in those days, it was almost verboten to say who you really were online. This was during a time where folks were worried that if you said who you were, some weirdo from the internet was gonna come and find you and get you. Um, P.S. I was probably one of the weirdest people there. Um, and I sure wasn't about to go get anybody because that just took too much energy and effort for a 14 year old. Anyway, so anytime I went into that chat, and I went many times after that initial experience, I got to have discussions uh, about all manner of things that I wasn't exposed to in Alaska in 1995. 
Um, this was the days be or before the widespread use of internet, you know, so in Alaska, which is very separated from the rest of the continental US, we only got what managed to filter its way up. So, you know, some top 40s radio, some stuff on MTV, and that was about it. But the internet gave me this window to experiences that weren't like mine. I learned what life was like for a young white man in, who lived an entire continent away in the deep south in Alabama, who had just had a daughter who was, and was struggling to raise a family. For no other reason but the internet would I have had any reason to connect with that young man. And we formed a friendship that lasts to this day. In fact, when I leave here tomorrow, I'm gonna fly to Alabama, and we're probably gonna hang out some. Um, for him and everyone else in that chat room, I was just another person that they talked to. They did not see my skin color. They would not have known my gender if I hadn't told them, because I was a 14-year-old girl and we blab a lot. Um, they just knew my very embarrassing handle that I had chosen at that time, and I'm not gonna tell you what it is because 14-year-olds pick terrible things. But we shared ideas. We formed friendships. We had relationships. And I'm not sure that that would happen today in this environment we have on the internet. I like to say that I grew up on the internet. I spent many hours on Ogrish and sent around awful shock videos to my friends because, you know, teenagers. Um, I tried out something awful, but it wasn't for me. There is a time or two when my posts were on the front page of Dig. My Reddit karma is, I think, almost over 9,000. Um, I had passive aggressive away messages on AIM. I can still make the ICQ uh-oh sound if you give me enough wine. Um, <laughs> I've run large message boards, and I've played admin for many others for my friends. I've watched social media go from chat rooms spread out all over the internet to more centralized formats, Friendster, MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, Pounce in there somewhere. Um, and I watched it all grow while catalog cataloging my life, at first on my GeoCities page, and then in my live journal, and then on my Zanga, eventually learning how to set up movable type on my own website, getting frustrated with it, and moving on to WordPress. Shout out to WordPress. Um, I've been all over the internet for the last 20 years, and I've watched the internet change and grow. I've watched the internet become, <clears throat> excuse me, less of a place where you can, can connect with anyone, no matter who they are and where they're from, but instead, you find people to hate. That pull towards hate, that pull towards being our worst selves online disappoints me because we've been an given an opportunity that we're squandering. We have the opportunity that billions of people before us did not have. We have this Tower of Babel we call the internet. We have the opportunity to view those we interact with online as human beings that we could possibly learn from. We have the opportunity to seek out those who are different from us, who believe different things from us, both online and off, and try to learn from them. Try to understand their experiences to try to figure out what it's like to be in their shoes. Unlike those before us, we have the opportunity to view the world through a different lens. And it seems like we're squandering that opportunity and going the opposite direction instead. That we're trying to understand, or that we're not trying to understand what other people are experienced, experiencing. That we're not trying to figure out what life is like in their shoes. We're not going outside of our well-known paths. We're not going outside of our safe places. Very few of us are going to where other people are. And there is no more important time to fix that as we enter this time of what, it, what looks like it's going to be intolerance on a global scale. From what I see in the US, from what I see happening in the UK, and in France, and in Sweden, I think we have good reason to be worried about a large-scale campaign of intolerance at best and global ethnic cleansing at worst. Now, some of y'all may think that's you know, going a bit far, but what we've seen in the US with the election, what the UK saw with Brexit, what France is seeing with Marie Le Pen, should be frightening. White nationalist groups in the US and abroad have not been afraid of saying that they would like to see people who aren't white killed in mass. Those who are anti-black or anti-gay 
or anti-Muslim, or anti-Jewish, or anti-Arminian, or anti-Roma, anti-anything that's not like them, want to see people who are like them gone. In fact, right now we are seeing so many things that are parallel to the rise of Hitler in Nazi Germany that I'm kind of amazed that you're all able to sit in your seats and be very calm right now. Um, I don't know about you, but I worry about the future of humanity. I would have thought that we learned our lesson in 1933. I would have thought that the world would move forward from that level of intolerance. I would have thought that even a hint at this level of intolerance, at a hint at Nazism, at a hint at the rise of white supremacy, would have caused an immune response in the world, wherein the good people of the world said, we're not having that, and cured the world of its infection. Instead, we have allowed it to grow like a cancer, much of it fueled by what happens online today. The numerous accounts on social media that don't say, I want to understand what life is like for other people, that don't say, I want to see what life looks like through someone else's eyes, that don't say, I want to make new friends who aren't like me, and instead target the people who aren't like them, mocking them, harassing them, threatening them, doxing them, telling them to kill themselves. Those people, those accounts online, going unchecked, are the ones who have let this cancer spread, who have helped this cancer to spread. And it is important for us to acknowledge the role that the tone and tenor of the interactions on the internet of late have had on shaping the tone and tenor of the global conversation. We have had a part in this, all of us. And it is up to us to do our part to end it. It is up to us to say we will not be part of the intolerance. It is up to us to say that we will not be part of the hate. That we will look at people who are not like us and say, I want to learn from you that we will look at people not like us and say, you have a story that is different from mine and that is interesting and you are valuable. <laughs> now, thank you. I want you to look around this room and see how many faces uh, you see that are faces you don't know. Just take a quick look around, see what people you don't know in this room. What is your reaction to those people, to those faces that you don't know? Do you think, I want to hate that person? Do you think it's okay to start yelling things at that person? Or is your reaction neutral, like, that's another human being? And how many of you, so far, have met someone today that you didn't know before and found them interesting? Show of hands. Totally. So, for those people you met, did you first ask what their politics were? Do you inquire about the gender of the person or persons that they love romantically? Probably not. It's not relevant. Now think about what your interactions with those same people would have been like if you'd met them online. In the current climate, if you found this person online, on Twitter, or wherever you'd like to go on the internet, you would have seen one thing that they said out of the entire person that they are. Maybe they talked about their religion, Maybe they shared a picture of them and their girlfriend and their boyfriend. Maybe they said that they wanted Syrian refugees to be safe because being safe is a human right that should be given to all. You find that one thing and you engage on that one thing and maybe even say something rude or completely write that person off because they don't share that one same view as you. But if you did that, you wouldn't have gotten a chance to know the person that you got to know here and found them cool and interesting you wouldn't have gotten a chance to know that maybe they're coming to this conference in Sweden in November. I think that's an important thing for all of us to remember, that every account online, module of the bots, represents a person, just like the people you've met here today. They are not two-dimensional avatars. They are living, breathing, complex human beings, just like you are. Every one of us are fascinating mosaics of feelings, of thoughts, of aspirations, of desires that don't conform to any stereotypes that people have about any group of people. We are all very complex people, and it's important for us to remember that in every conversation and try to engage as though we are talking to another complex human being, and in doing so, behave like decent human beings. Now, a lot of folks have been talking about evil lately, about how the people who are rising to power now are like Voldemort or Palpatine, and comparing their followers to Death Eaters and the Sith. And I disagree with that. I don't really believe that a vast majority of the people in this world are evil. That's not a worldview that I can get behind. But what I do believe 
is that we are all flawed. Every single human being in this world is flawed. Quick show of hands, who in here believes themselves to be perfect? Right, because we are all flawed. And for some reason, we are using the internet to amplify our flaws. And we are also using the internet to amplify the flaws of others in ways that are having ripple effects worldwide. We're using the internet to vent our anger, to exploit the weaknesses of others, to poke at sensitive spots, spots to hurt one another. And why? Why aren't we using the internet to build and amplify our strengths, to build and amplify what's good about one another, to, de to demonstrate that though we may be different, we are all good human beings who can treat others the same way. Now, this is gonna get weird. I want you to do a bit of an exercise here. If you can, I want you to, have, I want you to find someone that you don't know here, and I want you to talk to them right now, near you, or behind you, to your side, and ask them questions. Ask them what they're passionate about. Ask them what's most interesting about them. I want you to ask them what their greatest strength is, or maybe what their dreams are, or what they're scared of. And maybe you don't have to ask all of those, because that might take a while, and we have a very short amount of time. But maybe ask one or two of those. And I'll give you a few minutes. I really want you to ask people around you those questions. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm going to give y'all another 30 seconds or so to wrap up.
All right. Now, I'm sure at this point, you learned something about the stranger sitting next to you. I'm sure you know more about that stranger than you do about most people that you in interact with online. And I'm asking this of you, and I'm asking the, you to tell this to everyone you know, both online and off. <laughs> Waiting for my slides to move. Ah. When you first encounter someone online, instead of leading with fear because you don't know them, or disdain because you might not agree with one thing they said, or rudeness because you've forgotten that they too are human being, lead with curiosity because this is a new person to know. Lead with the questions that you just asked the person sitting next to you. Go into the conversation with the idea that this person, this human being who has value that you are talking to, is passionate about something, is scared about something, has dreams about something, that they love something, and that the most important thing for you in that moment is to find out what those things are. I hope that in the future, that in the very new future, that all, all of us can put these ideas into practice and stand up against hatred. That all of us can stand up against bigotry. That all of us can stand up against xenophobia. That all of us can accept one another. In fact, I think acceptance here is the bare minimum. I think we can go beyond that. I think we can go beyond just acceptance and just tolerance. And I think we can get to a place where we all treat each other as human beings because that's what we all are, human beings first. We all bleed the same blood. When you get down to it, all of us have almost identical DNA. There is very little difference between my DNA and any of your DNA. In fact, based on my genetics testing, if you are of uh, UK or Irish descent, we're probably related. Um, we are all mostly the same with a few important differences. And as alike as we are, it's important for us to celebrate those differences. Because the world would be quite dull if we didn't have any differences, frankly. The fact that someone out there loves someone of the same sex or wants to spend their, si their life with someone of the same gender doesn't make them worthy of hatred. That makes them different from you. The fact that someone out there has a different religion than you might does not make them worthy of hatred. The fact that someone chooses to live their life in a way that, you're, that you wouldn't doesn't make them worthy of hatred. It just makes them different. That makes them interesting. It makes them complex. It makes them a human being who just happens to be just a little bit different from you. And again, the world would be very, very boring if we were all the same. And so here is where I ask you all to do another thing. No more talking to each other this time, though. I ask you to encourage everyone to embrace the differences, to encourage everyone to love the differences they find in others, to encourage yourselves, your family, your friends, everyone to fight back against those that would have you hate, demean, and belittle people who are different from you, to fight back against the notion that those who are different from you are worthy of that hatred, are deserving of being excluded, are deserving of being unsafe, are de deserving of being unloved. I want you to fight back against that with everything you have, because it is very important right now. We are approaching a time in human history where we're going to have to prove what humanity is. We're going to have to either prove that humanity is hate, or we're going to have to prove that humanity is love. And I don't know about you, but I'm really hoping that we can stand up and prove that humanity is love. Because if humanity is hate, the human race is not going to last very long. If all we can do is hate each other and, sh and the people who share this earth with us, we're not going to be on this earth much longer. Hate leads to wars. And not so many of us will survive the next world war. Uh, that president-elect in the United States has very publicly talked about his willingness to use nuclear weapons. And I don't think many people in this room will survive a nuclear war. I know I probably won't. So please, for the sake of the future of the world, embrace love. Pull love from wherever you can get it, from this room, from the people you just talked to today, and then push it out onto the internet. Push happiness that we are different 
from one another onto the internet. Make the internet a place where everyone is valued, where every background, no matter what it is, is valued. Where a person who is different, a person who has a different religion, a different sexual orientation, a different gender, wears different clothes, has a different skin color, where those differences are important and represent life experiences that we can learn and grow from. Because there has never been, nor will there, will there ever be, a more important time in our lifetimes for us to stand up and say those things are important to us. And if you don't agree with me, if you think that hate is more powerful than love, then I hope that someday someone will love you enough that you learn just how powerful and important love is. Because despite the hate you have for others, you still are worthy of love. So fight against hate. Fight against injustice. Fight against intolerance. Fight against xenophobia. Make the internet the place we want to see the rest of the world be. If we want the world to be a place of love and enthusiastic embrace of everyone else's differences, a place where hate is not the rule, then we need to start at home. If we want to save this world, we need to start where we live, and we live on the internet. My name is Erica Joy Baker. Thank you for listening, and I hope you'll save the world with me. You can find me on Twitter at Erica Joy, or email me at hello at ericabaker.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the testament. Yep. Please thank. You get in a standing ovation. How yeah. about that? <laughs> I love it. Yes. Thank you. You know, Erica, I wanted to talk to you about something. Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you so much for, for giving a really heartfelt message. And you're standing in front of our huge heart. I love the heart. Yeah, it's so cool. Which, <laughs> to us, uh, the heart for us symbolizes our love for the internet. Mm -hmm. But you really brought the heart here also with what is it that we love about the internet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, a lot of people in here share your journey from the very early beginnings before the web yeah. and what the internet was like and the feeling of having lost that. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you a question that I know is very controversial mm -hmm. in the United States, but less so here. Um, would you agree with me if I say that it's the hate seems to stem mostly from men? It, seems, it stems a lot from men, but it is not just men. There are women out there. I see the most vitriolic messages from women online as well. Uh, a lot of them message me with a lot of vitriol. So while a lot of it comes from men, there it also comes from women. And what do you think, where does this hate come from? I mean, what, what, what's the source? I think it's fear, uh, at least in the, the discussions that I've, I've had online and what I've seen online. People's, the root of their hate is that they are afraid of what they don't know. Um, they are afraid of the Muslims that are coming to take their jobs. They are afraid of the Syrian immigrants who are going to change their quality of life. They're just afraid of what they don't know. And instead of trying to understand those people, uh, they fear them instead, and that fear projects as hate. Yeah, and what do you think? We, it's a question I've asked of almost all the keynote speakers here. Mm -hmm. what, what responsibility do you see from the, the huge internet corporations like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, the companies that actually own a lot of the channels where we talk now? You mentioned ICQ and other earlier protocols, yeah. but today so much of the communication is in the hands of these few corporations. Mm -hmm. what, what do you feel is their responsibility when it comes to spreading hate or spreading love? Well, sp specifically for Twitter and Facebook, because that's where I live um, mostly, uh, I would see those companies be more stringent in their application of their policies against uh, hate speech, uh, against harassment, against threats. Um, I like Reddit's rule about not doxing people. I feel like other companies can take that and grow with it. Um, but definitely just like stamping out the speech. And for Google, they have this page that people go to at least once a day several times a day for most people. There is something to be done with their website that could help change the world. If it's just like putting a little sentence underneath the search box that says, you know, Muslims are not trying to take your jobs or something, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They, you know, they have a very strong team of PR people who can figure out the wording for that. But you know, they have this stage. They have the internet as their stage and they can use it to speak just like I did. 
Well, thank you so much. We have uh, a little gift for you, a small token of our appreciation. And it's uh, a robot yeah. that comes with its own internet heart. And we Aww. hope that you get to uh, remind, uh, remind yourselves of us when uh, you come back home and that you have friends here in Sweden who are now on your crusade against internet hate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you thank Erika. You. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>